Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about flying the PW5 on a cross country. It was an amazing day. I flew about 350 kilometers or about 217 miles and it took about five hours. The PW has a 15 meter wingspan or about 45 feet. It weighs empty about 400 pounds with a maximum gross weight of about 660 pounds. Stall speed is around 35 miles an hour. Cruising speed is between say 40 and 70 miles per hour and I usually fly around 60 on a cross country. And here's the flight. Started at TSA over there, flew to Stephenville and that's about 70 miles and from there I turned south headed to Hamilton, Texas and that's about 40 miles. Then I turned toward TSA but the clouds were a little bit better. So I headed to Hillsboro and that uh, was about 65 miles and then about 40 miles back up to TSA. All right, we're gonna stay very focused here. No distractions, we're keeping an eye on that tow plane. If something goes wrong right now, I can release and go to the right. The tow plane would go to the left, hopefully. We're gonna keep it right off the deck five, ten feet off. We're going to follow the tow plane and you'll notice he's making a right hand turn and why would he do that? Well, it's, it's really easy to understand. It just takes less of a 180 degree turn to get back to the runway. Just a little. I just said mark 200. That means uh, I, uh, so in my mind, I'm trained. If that rope fails right then, I'm going to make 180 degree turn or less to get back to the runway and land downwind safely. We do that in our training. You will do that in your training too. All right, we're coming up to tow release. The glider will turn to the right and the tow plane will turn to the left and just to help us separate away from each other as soon as possible. And what a beautiful day it was. Right off, right off tow. That's what we like. I just said we just got off tow right into thermal and that's what we like to do nice thermal four knots four knots indicated and what a beautiful what a beautiful day it was it just i was off the ground at 12 o'clock and for a pw that's pretty early <laughs> if you're an experienced pilot you'll understand but we've had some people take off at 11 o'clock in the morning on a on a in high performance gliders this is considered low performance on this flight i did not have an exact flight plan figured out. Many times we'll just get up there in the air, see how it feels, look at the clouds, cloud reading is what we do, and just go from there. And I decided to go to Stephenville very soon and it would it would take me over a number of airports that I could land out safely at. I did have a tailwind and it didn't take very long to get there, but generally we like to have a tailwind on our last leg, right? Toward the end of the day. And I didn't have that, but it still worked out. And I made it back in five hours. It looks like the cloud base right now is probably around 4,500, maybe closer to 5,000. I'm gonna work the remainder of this thermal and then we'll start heading out to uh, Stephenville. And there's a couple of airports. Uh, Lupscombe, you, you can't land out anymore. We already kind of know that. But then there's another one called Embry that I'll fly over. Cleburne, I'll fly over. Here I am. Looks like still working, working a good thermal there. Looks like, wow, five knots. Oh yeah, look at that. Six, Real nice, six knots. Six knots, I said. Wow, and what a great day. And, when I did this cross country, I just decided I'm going to go for it. And it turned out okay, but in the back of my mind, I, the fear of landing out is, is there in my back of my mind. And, and some, some really good pilots, it, that doesn't even bug them. We have a lot of members that are highly skilled glider pilots that just take off. And I just, sometimes I wonder how in the heck can they do that? <laughs> But I see it all the time at our club. If you notice on the screen, 
that yellow line that's that's the flight to scale and you'll see that little triangle there as it moves closer on out to Stephenville just an amazing day this was in August and typically that's probably some of our best flying weather July and August at this point it looks like I'm I'd probably say over Embry Airport and I've landed there um, once or twice and it's an asphalt runway and it's private but you can land there if you need it and it's plenty long 1500 feet long and that's plenty for a tow out and I've I got a tow back that, that's the luxury not every club has that ability to do that now we can't pick you up if you just land in some field somewhere we're not going to do that but if you land at a, at a grass strip or an asphalt place that's long enough it's safe they'll come and they'll come and help you come get me help me <laughs> look at this now wow oh my gosh Look at that, man. Right at 5,000. Coming up on 5,000. Feels real good to the soul. <laughs> real warm, fuzzy feelings sometimes. And then sometimes uh, not so warm and fuzzy <laughs> when you're getting low. And that does happen. You're going to get low a few times. Sometimes you're going to get back up higher and sometimes you're not. That's just the way it is. Every flight is different. I don't care if you do the same flight in three days it's, it's everything is different the dynamics of the air everything it, it just it's just a great hobby it's a sport we call it an afternoon sport down here in Texas Dallas anyway because we need the the air we need the thermals from the ground to you know make this all work for us all right looking at the my triangle there on the yellow squiggly line, I would say I'm about over Cleburne at that time. I'm still halfway, probably another, what is it, uh, 30 miles over to Stephenville. And it was nice to have a tailwind, but coming back, it was a little bit of a struggle. And I was running out of daylight because I landed at 5. I mean, we still probably had another hour. But the clouds started to just kind of, you know, disappear. <laughs> Our glider club at Texas Soaring Association, we have three PW5s. And they cost about $21 an hour to rent. And a tow will cost you about 30 bucks. But in the scheme of things, in aviation, boy, it's a lot cheaper than a whole lot of things, isn't it? Where do you, can you rent a plane for $21 an hour? Yeah. And we have about 244 members. About half own their own ships. And the other half do what I'm doing right now is taking one of the PWs up for a cross-country flight. And just look at that, over 5,000. Yeah, man. Just incredible. And the clouds were all there just Almost every one of them seemed to have lift under it. Amazing day. TSA or Texas Soaring Association also has three high performance two seater trainers called the ASK 21. We have three of those and they're used extensively for training. We don't we don't take those assets out on cross country. Those are valuable assets to the club for training and we stay within gliding range with those uh, gliders. Our club is all volunteer and without the volunteers helping our club it would not exist. We all are out there to help each other. If you need help there's always somebody around to help you. That's just part of what we do. If somebody says hey can you help me for a second? I say certainly I can. Not a problem. Whoa, Look at this. Feet a minute for, for a few seconds. Almost a thousand feet a minute for like two seconds. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> All right, coming up to Stephenville too. Feel like I'm getting a warm fuzzy, but not really. 
even the instructors at TSA are volunteer. You don't pay for instruction. That's not that's not what we are. We're not a commercial operation. So, I mean, we've had some people like want to come out and you know get their rating and all that. Well, we're we're not really set up for that. We're set up to have a club. Whoa! Whoa! Something's going on. Thousand feet a minute. Thousand feet a minute. I can't even see. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Man. Look at that. Man, that was. I tell you, that's one hell of a ride. <laughs> But anyway, we're all volunteers down here in Texas. <clears throat> and I said before that we're not a commercial operation, so you can't just come down here and say, oh, I just need to get my rating real quick and I'll be off and running. No, that's not gonna happen at our club. If you wanna be a member, you participate in the activities. And a lot of that is doing, we do inspections and annuals on, gli on gliders. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that go on there. You got maintenance, you got the field, you got a hundred acres, you got, you got, you got tow planes. We got three, three or four tow planes, uh, the Pawnees, and, and they all need need uh, servicing, and and that's why we exist as a club. It's because we volunteer and help everybody out. So if that fits in your parameters, then yeah, come on down and and take a first flight and see what it's like. If you have a private license, you can do an add-on. And obviously that's going to be a lot less work because you're you're an experienced private pilot. So that could be an advantage to you. That's what I did when I started out. I was already a private pilot, so adding the, the glider add-on was challenging, no doubt. Now look at this. Whoa. Wow, man. Okay, we're about halfway to Hamilton now. So I'd say we got mm, 30 miles to go. Maybe not that much, let's see. Maybe 20 miles more to Hamilton. And, and there's a great flying club there. Hamilton, Texas has a wonderful club. So you might want to look that up on Google too, if that might be a better location for you. And when we're flying cross country, sometimes we'll circle in thermals and sometimes we won't. Sometimes, we're high enough, we get a really strong thermal, we don't really need to circle in it, so we'll just slow down in that lift and let it let it bring us up higher. Once we get through that, typically you might find some down air, so you push the nose down, pick up speed to get away from down air. We don't, if you're going to stay up in the air, you don't hang around in down air, right? You follow the clouds. When we do have clouds, sometimes we don't have any clouds. And it makes it a bit more challenging because you really can't say, well, maybe there's a little lift here or there. Maybe you can tell from the ground. Maybe you see a dust devil. Maybe you see a bird. You know, those kind of things. But it's just a whole lot of fun and, it, and it's such a challenge. When you actually do something like this and you get back on the ground, you really can't really describe it. The feelings that you have. Just a wonderful sport. And if you want to try it, just come on out here and we'll put you in one of our two-seaters and, and, and let you try it out and see what you think. Come on down. Be a member. Help us out. Participate. Help us with the glider repairs. Annuals. You got it. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Looks like we're about five miles to Hamilton. And I always like to fly over it wag my wings hey I'm up here can you see me <laughs> not really but but it's a that's a real nice place to land out if you need to land I guarantee it real nice runway real long too hopefully I don't remember exactly but it sure looks nice from five or ten thousand feet <laughs> if you're lucky <laughs> so when we're talking about um, landing out when you start getting low and and 3,000 feet above the ground is not necessarily low but you just kind of want a general landing area just generally say okay uh, now what happens when I'm at 2,000 feet hmm above the ground well you better have a Pacific landing area 
When you're 1,000 feet above the ground, it's time to commit and make that landing. Focus on the landing, not trying to stay up in the air. I mean, we've all done it. If you've flown long enough, I mean, I've caught a thermal at 1,000 feet above the ground, but I, but I have a perfect spot to land in if it fails, okay? I would never do that if I was just out somewhere and, 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 did, and it didn't look good. That's not the way I'm going to fly this machine. So you, that's just part of your training, too. Uh, you will practice landing out. You'll practice doing spot landings. There's a lot of things you're going to do, and, and once you get past that, then it's time to start going on cross-country flights and challenging yourself even further. And flying cross-country will definitely challenge you. I don't care how much of an expert you are. It's, it's one of the challenging things I've ever done. I mean, to fly 217 miles on a 400-pound glider in five hours is respectable, no doubt. And any, any a glider pilot that has experience will tell you that. I mean, a PW is low performance. So we got to work harder than the, when the guys have those high performance 50 to 100 to 1 glide ratios <laughs> and cruise at 100, 125 knots all day long. I'm lucky to do 60, <laughs> maybe 70 on a, on a really strong day, but I don't know. I seem to hover around 60, 65 miles an hour on a cross country. That's about all I can tell you on that. Forrest Gump. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> so you, you notice the cumulus clouds there. Uh, that's, they tell us where the lift is. It's not 100% guaranteed every cloud is going to have rising air in it. But there's a pretty good chance there will be. And that's why glider pilots love these beautiful puffy clouds. And sometimes... They can be seven, eight, ten thousand feet high on an occasional day, and I've I have flown that. This day, it was really more like four to five thousand, or maybe four to six thousand, maybe with an average of forty-five hundred feet all the way around the course. Okay, looking at the yellow squiggly line, it looks like um past Hamilton now and I'm going to work my way I was going to try to go directly back to TSA and you know follow the cloud line but they were kind of dying out uh, a little bit so I decided to head over to Hillsboro and you know I'm running out of daylight but I got to Hillsboro right which is I don't know it looks like it's probably 30 miles away Great place to land out, by the way. Beautiful runway. Cement runway, plenty long. You could get an arrow toe out of there. And of course, I did not have a tailwind. So I'm going a lot slower on the ground speed. <clears throat> Definitely. But that's just part of this flight. I just got to Stephenville probably 40, 40 minutes. But coming this way, coming back into the wind, oh yeah. You feel it. So uh, I followed the clouds over to Hillsboro and then said, okay, there's not much left, but I got 20 TSA 30 miles away from that point. And it all worked out. What a great day. Look at these clouds. Look at that thing I'm getting ready to go underneath. It's probably going to suck me right up into it. <laughs> Just a lot of fun, isn't it? Hope you enjoy it too. Try it. It's no riskier than driving a car. <laughs> if you look at the stats. That's a whole different subject. We'll have to talk about that some other year. <laughs> look at this. Here it is. Oh yeah. And I'm not circling in it, am I? I'm just kind of working my way in that lift. Maybe I'm circling. I can't even tell. Yeah, maybe I am. Okay. Look at that. 500 feet a minute. And you hear that burial beeping. A lot of people say that's the most annoying thing I've ever heard. Well, maybe it's because you're not a glider pilot. That is music to our ears. And it also allows us to look out the window 
instead of looking at a variometer, right? I just you just listen to it. We don't we don't look at the gauge. That keeps her eyes out looking looking for other traffic, looking for birds, looking for other gliders that might be in a thermal that we could go over and get in. And look at this one, man. Just just a nice ride on this one. Look at her go. Whoa! 1,500 feet a minute for one second. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> I have uh, people ask me all the time, how do you put this, how do you get this live data on the screen? And it's taken me a number of years to kind of figure it out. But if you get a Hero 5 camera and you get a product from GoPro, which is free, called Dashware.net. The camera, the GoPro 5, will auto sync the data with the flight. You don't have to, to kind of sync it all in. It, it's just going to work fine. I, the heroes above that cameras won't auto sync. But if you want to try it as a hobby, just get a used uh, GoPro 5 and, and download the Dashware.net software and start practicing with it. And obviously, you got to know how to how to work your uh, editing I use cyberlink and I love cyberlink power power director it's, it's an amazing I've tried other ones and this is the most useful software I've ever had not a lot of bugs in it and they're constantly updating it and you can get a subscription like everything else now everything's pretty much subscription based and it'll keep you updated all day long it's just a joy to use PowerDirector 365 from CyberLink. So, if you're if you're wanting to learn one, this would be the one I'd highly recommend to try out. If you're going to try the next step and do some of these kind of videos like I'm doing, and Dashware.net is free from GoPro. They bought them out and they never did anything else with it. They never updated the the Hero 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to auto sync. And so I've had another, another, you know, number of people ask me. I said, just get the, get a used Hero Five, maybe for a hundred bucks. You don't have to spend five, six hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars on a camera these days. There you go. All right, looking at the yellow, yellow squiggly line, looks like oh, five, ten miles from uh, Hillsboro. Still got some nice clouds there. Looking good, looking real nice. What am I showing on the altimeter? Maybe 5,000. It's kind of hard for me to see it on the screen when I'm doing the uh, audio here. Can't see it exactly, but yeah, 5,000 and something. So feeling good, feeling good, real good, I hope. <laughs> we just got to get over to Hillsboro and then. And uh, I remember when I finally got there, I, uh, I called. Uh, TSA just kind of let them know I'm I'm still up in the air I'm still up here and they kind of all looked up and they didn't see any clouds left and it was like getting close to five o'clock I was like oh my god I don't know if he's going to make it back <laughs> because as the day goes on many times these clouds will kind of dissipate have you ever noticed that if you're not a weather person maybe you don't really notice it but glider pilots we're always looking at the uh, up, up at these clouds <laughs> the higher the better too not cirrus clouds we can't we can't fly in cirrus you know because you're running into frozen water vapor right <laughs> i'm kind of exaggerating but no we don't get that high up that'd be like thirty thousand feet not not going to happen around here and uh, at least not the part of dallas i live in <laughs> so yeah, look at that. Over 6,000 now? Okay. Feeling real good. Feeling real good. Warm fuzzy all day long. There you go. Look at that cloud right there. Hmm. Looks good. Yeah. Going to fly right over to it, I think. <laughs> so, I don't know. Who's a, who knows? So, when I was flying from uh, Hamilton... I was trying to go back 
pretty much direct line back to TSA, but the clouds look better over to Hillsboro, so I made the detour, but then you got another problem. I'm running out of daylight. And you can tell these clouds, once they start to disappear on you, well, that's not going to be a good thing for most of us, not for me anyway. The, the performance of a PW, not that great, so, but look, what is this? Look at that cloud. Oh my God. Look, man, that, that one has got to be good. What do you think? I mean... I'm going to fly right to it and it'll take me about 15 minutes to get there and probably a thousand feet but I'll get there and and uh, it might be a real good thermal underneath it and then there might there might be nothing under it you don't know until you get over and try it it's called cloud reading and in the beginning I did not understand cloud reading I was reading about clouds in my books <laughs> But once you start to understand cloud reading, you can find thermal streets. And what I mean by that are just these lo long lines of clouds that you go under each one. And you may go, some people can go 100 miles without even a circling in a thermal. I've, some of my mentors have done that and, and what's called a dual discus, high performance glider. Never turn, just get underneath cloud, go up. 500 feet come back down go up the next one 500 thousand whatever boom 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 you're done you're back at base lickety split baby <laughs> oh well you, you know, one of the hardest things to do in making these videos is the audio so i i don't know i just kind of ad lib the whole thing uh and then go from there okay we're coming up uh on the landing sequence uh my battery failed after five hours so I just plugged in this this one landing sequence obviously you see a lot of clouds up there that they were pretty much gone by the time I got back so just to make the video complete I'm just using another another clip from another flight and you'll see TSA on the left hand side can you see that little line there that's that's the runway Okay, I just made my announcement. I'm on the downwind leg, and we like to be about 1,500 feet midfield downwind. All right, back at 1,500 feet there, looking good. That puts us at about 900 feet above the ground. And that's our target. We want to be about 1,500 feet at midfield, and that's just part of your training, too. We all we want to stay in the same type of pattern, don't we? We we don't want planes, gliders way up high, and some way down lower. You know, we, this helps helps us see what's going on, and, and you've got to look out there. The most dangerous. PSA traffic, left for two. Okay, I just made an announcement. I was number two. I I, I don't think there was uh, another glider on landing. But uh, there was one on the runway, and we'll talk about that in a minute. What do you do when there's two or three or four or five gliders landing at the same time? I mean, that can happen, and it does occasionally. Maybe not five at one time, but two or maybe even three. Well, we've got a long, we got the asphalt runway, and then we have a, uh, the grass area too. And everybody with experience, you'll, you'll learn it. You'll be able to do the same thing. It won't be a, a big deal. You just gotta be very observant and listening on the radio as well. Okay, so now I'm coming into final approach here and guess what? I got a glider on the end of the runway. Well, I'm certainly not gonna fly over the top of him. I would never do that. So I, I can land in the grass right now, no big deal, but I've got enough sufficient airspeed here. I'm just gonna move it on over. There we go. Set her down. I'm going to keep flying, keep flying, keep the wings level. We haven't stopped flying until we are not moving anymore. All right, and I'm going to use full right rudder over here, try to get off the runway. Yo. There you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and look up all my other videos about flying 
high performance gliders, radio control, rocketry, NASA, and a lot more. We'll see you in the air next time. Bye bye.